I'm Josh Loebner, Director of Strategy with Design Sensory. It's a uh, full-service ad agency in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we work with uh, global destination clients as well as uh, state level and, and local. Uh, I want to share this poster. This is um, co-host of the, of the Explorable podcast. Hopefully everybody here has listened to it or been a guest or both. Uh, but if not, um, feel free to listen, explorablepodcast.com. And uh, feel free to grab a poster. They're just outside this door. Uh, you can roll them up and put them in your suitcase. And it's just a lovely piece of art that recognizes, celebrates, and welcomes uh, disability travel into uh, your office or any other room. And it helps spur, spur conversations. Uh, we've had some wonderful guests uh, that we've recorded as well. I, I think we're going to get a couple more before the evening is out. And um, so just to dive in a little bit about uh, having a marketing plan. You know, if you think about those two words, really, uh, nobody, no one ever, uh, hopefully, is just wasting money when it comes to marketing, right? You are wanting to invest those dollars in a way that shows that every dollar is meaningful, accounted for, and is associated with some type of metric. So that's a, that's a powerful thing. Uh, and then the word plan, right? You are not only having a marketing initiative that uh, just kind of disappears. You want that marketing to continue, to continue to bring in your customers, uh, travelers to your destination, however large or small. And you want to plan. You want to make sure that you have something in place that uh, helps to guide people to where you are. Uh, I just have a few things that I'll share when it comes to creating a disability inclusive marketing plan. And the first thing is, um, yeah, I don't think that's mine, uh, is that if anybody has, has read marketing or advertising um, news stories recently, Degree Deodorant came out with an accessible and inclusive deodorant this year. It gained international publicity. And you might ask, why are you talking about deodorant at a, a conference on travel and disability inclusion? Well, the deodorant itself was very inclusive. The packaging allowed people with uh, certain ambulatory um, disabilities to be able to easily put it on. Uh, it, it had tactile elements on the packaging to allow uh, people with low vision or those who are blind to easily use the deodorant. The other interesting thing about it was that the advertising, of course, was welcoming to people with disabilities. But, but I say all that about a deodorant. If a deodorant that's accessible and inclusive can gain global notoriety, a destination that welcomes disability can too. So w when we see uh, consumer packaged goods that are welcoming disability, it's an opportunity for, for anyone here to say, what can we do to make sure that we're promoting ourselves uh, with a marketing plan? There are three goals that, that uh, can help you focus your marketing plan. Number one, start with research. We've heard that uh, time and again this morning and yesterday in these conversations. Ensure that you have data to be able to guide you in your, your marketing plan. And, and then secondly, if you do have a plan, how does that plan incorporate people with disabilities? Are you welcoming them in a way that their voice is part of the conversations and not just bolted on? And then ultimately, uh, similar to that conversation I just mentioned about that degree ad, and you, you can um, cycle through that slide, uh, is that you want to make sure you're not just using disability in any way from, as a prop standpoint in your marketing, but, but more uh, intrinsically and authentically including it. And you can cycle to the next slide. This, this is super simple. Uh, I am not a fan of acronyms. Acronyms, to an extent, create elitism by those who know what those letters mean uh, and, and, and segregate different groups within corporations and, and even uh, uh, small destinations and attractions. You know, you have a DE&I specialist, and that's their job. Or at Destinations International, they jumbled the letters in, in an odd way and created EDI, which is not used across multiple and, and uh, disparate uh, industry categories. It's, it's complex and odd, and it doesn't make sense. Uh, from my perspective, we have an opportunity to humanize the acronym in a way that makes it super simplistic and ownable by anybody. 
and it incorporates disability in a positive way. And that's ideas. How important are your ideas, ideas standing for inclusion, diversity, equity, accessibility, and successes? It's a simple thing to, to now note that my ideas are important, and I can bring an idea in in any part of a marketing plan, marketing campaign, or collaboration I have with the community as a destination. Uh, we all hopefully have ideas that we celebrate. And hopefully from a, a diverse perspective, we celebrate black ideas, we celebrate uh, LGBTQ plus ideas, and hopefully we all celebrate disabled ideas. So that's just a reframing of what, what that means, and, and you guys can keep going through. So how does uh, inclusion connect back to the disability community? Well, as we've heard from so many different speakers, there are ways to be able to welcome the community of disability. It is not just um, people in wheelchairs, although they are a powerful and large part of the disability community. It's people who are, who are blind and, and so many others. And from an inclusion standpoint, we want to make sure that they're at the table. We've heard people say nothing about us without us already time and again in this presentation and so on and so forth when we really absorb what's being said in the disability community. So make sure that people with disabilities are sitting at the table, are coming up in some way, shape, or form with the marketing, that you're hearing from them to be able to develop plans that are authentic and, and engaging. And then from a diverse standpoint, uh, in the past, brands, marketers, destinations tended to uh, whitewash, where often people of color may not have been as represented as they could or should be, or other minorities for that matter. And disability uh, was seen in a way that um, it, it wasn't representative of intersectional disabilities. For example, a queer woman of color in a wheelchair. Uh, but now we're seeing so many positive ways of that. So make sure that your marketing is uh, inclusive, is diverse when it comes to the disability community. And also that it's equitable. And equitable is an interesting term and, and sometimes it's a bit squishy and people don't understand it. I've heard a few succinct comments at this uh, conference about hiring people with disabilities. And I can't stress enough the value of, it's not only important to listen to them and have them at the table as community members to showcase as a local or as a traveler what's important and how you can weave those narratives into your marketing, but also how can you look to be able to give people with disabilities in your community um, some type of positive, equitable position, either as a volunteer, as an intern, as a seasonal worker, or as a full-time employee to be able to have them uh, be able to share their value in, in recreating in your community. So equity is critical in, in that uh, it's, it's wonderful that we're training so many different people. We're training non-disabled designers and non-disabled marketing teams to welcome disability. Training is great, but creating jobs for people with disabilities, I would argue, is, is even more important. And then accessibility. Accessibility is a human right, but accessibility is connected in this ideas word in a way that it, it's uh, not a precursor, it's, it's, it's intrinsically central to an idea. It's not something to wash our hands and say, well, we've created something accessible, let's, let's walk away from it and, and check that box, but to say it's part of something larger from uh, a welcoming people with disabilities. And, and I will say this, from a marketing plan perspective, um, I'm gonna throw out a nickel word here, omnichannel communications, which basically means a customer journey. And what are those touch points that, that you have within your marketing so that you're bridging all those communication gaps to be able to guide that person, whether they're disabled or non-disabled, down that path of making that decision to convert, to choose your destination. Omnichannel marketing is basically connecting at all of those points and bridging all of those gaps. And what you want to do from an accessibility standpoint is make sure that each one of those is accessible. Uh, and then finally, success is significant and important. Uh, I hope we don't just have an idea, either here today in this conference or once we leave in our regular day job or at home. Hopefully we have ideas that we can celebrate and, and embrace every day of our lives uh, in our professional roles and beyond. And the, the S in ideas is super critical because we can't just let what we're doing be something that's altruistic uh, and some flight of fancy that may not have budget for it next year. We need to be 
as entrenched from a business case standpoint within our marketing planning so that disability inclusion is seen as a, a business value as opposed to a, um, an empty uh, debt that isn't bringing any return on investment. So success is central, and that's where research and data comes in into play, kind of circling back to that earlier point. Uh, I will say uh, about a media plan, uh, there are four different types of media just to share. Omnichannel media is, of course, everything. But if you break that down further, we've got paid media, which is advertising, earned media, which is uh, any articles or news coverage that you may get, uh, shared media, uh, and, and, and those media are really um, critical to how you put your plan together. You know, people often ask, um, oh, how can I advertise to the disability community? And what I would say is, Based on everything we've heard today, if one in four people in America has a disability, if you have paid advertising, you're going to connect with people with disabilities. Uh, as a strategist, I would not suggest creating a specific and targeted paid placement campaign for people with disabilities, but include people with disabilities in, uh, from a narrative perspective in that. But in your earned media, in your owned media, and your shared media, those are the places where you can really target people with disabilities very succinctly and, and narrow casting as opposed to broadcasting with your paid media. So just to dive into that a little bit more, your shared media or, or your social media, that's the place where you can connect with uh, Facebook groups, with individuals with disabilities. I can't tell you how many people I'm connected with on LinkedIn that in some way are part of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives or, or disability specific or travel and tourism. So social media is one of those places, and again, shared media, where you can really target very granularly those people with disabilities in those groups within your community and outside of your community to welcome them uh, in, in a way that your investment is not going to be um, diluted like it would with, with paid media. Earned media is also an amazing opportunity to be able to target not only mass media, as we saw with that uh, deodorant ad, it gained international uh, coverage because they did something bold and creative and innovative. Um, you have so many opportunities from your local media affiliates to be able to gain coverage for what you're doing, welcoming uh, the disability community to your destination, but also regional feeder market media, and, and more directly, specific media uh, that targets, for example, um, people who are blind, like the Nation National Federation of the Blind newsletter, like New Mobility Magazine. And when you do launch uh, an earned media campaign that coincides with your other efforts, you want to make sure that whatever media you're incorporating in your news release is accessible. What I've seen before oftentimes is that, that destinations have these beautiful immersive ads that, that do feature people with disabilities. Uh, disappointingly, when they, they push those in a press release or a, a video news release, the ads do not include audio descriptions or closed captioning, or they don't have transcripts of them to be able to allow um, press who have disabilities to be able to interpret that media in a way that they can showcase it. So if I had one last thing to say as Jake's coming up here, there's not one silver bullet, but you want to ensure that you have a, a multimodal or a multimedia approach to welcoming people with disabilities. It's not just advertising, it's not just public relations, it's not just social media, but you layer in all of those together, or own media, the, you know, your website, etc. It's not any one of those, but it's a, it's a connected web of those in a way that you're um, defining who you are to the disability community in a way that it connects on their terms.